I woke up this morning and I was thinking about this piece and how this piece is about, in a way, paying attention to what is already here and how there are already all sorts of rhythms and modulations that happen in every location that most of the time we are unaware of. And I wanted this work to bring our awareness of those modulations, to heighten our awareness of those modulations that already exist. And that is, by and large, how this piece works. So just to say a little bit about it, if you slide these elements, um, you effectively shift the way the space is organized. So by moving something, you're changing the way other things behave. And these, um, I think of these as inputs. So the inputs overlap with the outputs. And these all affect each other. And so basically, there's three inputs, and there's six outputs, and they overlap in space. And that's, that's largely what's happening here. This piece grew out of the piece that I did with Helen at Kunstmuseum Tun. And that was the first time that I played with these networked and overlapping inputs and outputs. So one of the things you'll notice is that by moving this input, I'm moving one element here, but I'm also moving an element behind Hester back there. And that that sets up this relationship where things start to overlap and you become aware of how things are in phase and how things are out of phase. So that if three people are moving them, simultaneously you start to understand the rhythm between them. And insofar as I was thinking about this idea of generous listening, I think of music as having a set of um, kind of rhythms, and these rhythms come in and out of uh, alignment. And this in some ways uses the gesture of the body and the um, organization of the space and the, the time of the space to reenact these overlapping rhythms. And, and that's largely what this work is. Actually, I've, the work is doing a lot of other things that I'm incredibly excited about, which is this room has this beautiful view of all of the patterns that happen in the city. And all of the patterns that happen in the city have a view of this room. And so there's this wonderful overlap that if you're in here long enough, you start to see and feel the changes as they happen outside. And by creating a light situation interior that is in flux and having the daylight changing outside, you start to have this modulation. And as this day gets darker, what's happening on the interior becomes more and more legible from the interior because it starts to reflect. So it's almost as if you get this double space as it continues out in the street. And also as it becomes night, then all of the people on the outside start to become aware of what's happening on the insides. And when you just were talking about this idea of generous listening, uh, generous listening in my mind invokes the following idea, I, having no idea what this is, which is there's a way that these patterns and rhythms and modulations are constantly all around us and that by generously listening to those patterns and rhythms, we become aware of how they overlap and interweave. And that is very much at the core of what I'm interested in doing here. When I was working with Helen one of, uh, Tun, in Tun, the space was much denser and there was a uh, part of what was activated by these inputs were these walls. So the walls would start to slide from side to side and the inputs, they didn't slide, they actually rotated. So there was a very different um, kind of re planar relation to the body because things were happening at different um, kind of scales. But what I have found through playing with this problem over the last two years is that by having the space empty, you're able to understand change very differently. So by not, let's say, densifying it in the space, you can, it starts to become legi legible how these things interweave and how they interweave in time. So it was very important to me for this work to keep the work empty. I wanted as little in the space as possible. And 
even in the sense of kind of building these walls, I wanted the walls to serve as sort of junction points through which these lines of light would weave, and kind of like a fabric. I felt like this was a really great gift to be able to leave this space totally empty in some sense. And then one other thing I'll say about that is that each of these, there's three instruments in this work. So I think of these as in, each of these as instruments, and the instruments overlap in a network. And the, one of the characteristics of these instruments is that they have axial change. So as you're describing, these have axial change on, let's call it an x-axis, and also on a z-axis, but also on a y-axis. And there's no rotation. So all of those, those constraints are, I think, of like generative constraints, but they're very intentional.